views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Are you ready to get fired up about Power Up Radio with Dr. Pat? Unleashed, Unshaken, Unstoppable brings mind-blowing news, conversations with top world thought leaders, and Dr. Pat herself, unleashed like never before. Mega talk covering the most leading edge and headlines worthy topics from pop culture to presidents, sex to spirituality, surviving to thriving, Hollywood to Bollywood, and music to miracles, addiction to action, and rhetoric to rockin' it. It's not about mistakes and all about the guts to not just step out of your comfort zone, but annihilate it. Think authentic and spontaneous. Think fun and forefront. Think no matter what. Don't just make a difference. Be the difference. Now here's Dr. Pat. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Power Up Radio. Yep, this is uh, Look It. This is for those of you out there that are thinking, oh, man, what am I going to do with my life? My life is like so boring. I have a dream, but I can't get off the gate out of it. Or you're thinking about like what's happening in the world? What's going on in the world? Well, this show, Power Up Radio, is to help you be part of the world, to really face the things that are going on in your life. Take a look at yourself and say, I'm all in. I'm all in. Today's show is uh, with somebody that is not only all in, but is helping everybody else get all in. And so one of the things I love about this and what I do is to really help us understand that it doesn't matter what you go through in life, that we get to write the script of how we want to live for our future. So today, I want to introduce everybody out there to this individual, this, this great man. Yeah. Master Chief. That's what I like to say. Master Chief, Leon R. Walker Jr., who wrote the book Broken. And today, what we're talking about goes beyond what you might think you're reading or goes beyond what you might think your life is about. Because if you feel that you're broken or if you feel parts of your life are broken or if you feel that there's something out of whack with you in your life, we are here today to tell you don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Don't stop fighting back. Don't start start using the word can't because today's show is for everybody out there. I want to know that it's also a call-in show for those of you out there who want to check in with Master Chief Walker. 1-800-930-2819. Thank you for joining me here again. Thank you so much, Master Chief. Thank you so much for joining me here again. Thanks for for having me, Dr. Dr. Pat. I appreciate it. Listen, um, having a life experience, as many of us have had, right. having a life experience, it can define us or it can refine us. And in your case, I think it does both. So I, I want to start out by asking you about the book and about the word broken. Okay. What does that come to mean for you in terms of your life story and journey? And also, what does it come to mean for you and how to rise up above that? And thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. The word broken, uh, what, what it does first for me, what it did for me and what it'll do for the, the listeners out there is the first, it'll make you identify that there is or there was something wrong with you as a person. A lot of times we avoid that. A lot of times we're scared of that. We're afraid of it. We don't want to admit to it. A lot of times we're embarrassed by it. But it, what it did for me is made me realize, you know what, there's something wrong with me. Even though when I started writing this book at about 50 years old, I was afraid. At 50 years old, I was still afraid of things that happened to me when I was five years old. So you got people that are living these things, living this life, going through life, just plowing through, just 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 make them sure that they get to what they want to get to, but they don't they don't really they don't realize the, the the root cause of the problem. See a lot of times as hard workers, just like you, you went back to college in your forties, right? Yeah, so no kidding. Times, right. A lot of times we say, you know what, 
Why am I so driven? What am I hiding? What am, what am I suppressing, right? Because we replace that, that pain, we replace that sorrow, we, we replace those times when we were down and out with pushing so hard in life to make sure we forget about that. But the key thing for me was to remember, yeah, you were once broken, you can go back to that point, you can go back there. So that's why I say, you know what, broken, I'm broken, I had to admit to myself. If you don't admit to it, you're gonna find yourself constantly going back to that little broken little kid or little girl, or you're gonna find yourself going back to those bad ways and, and those addictions. So that's why broken means to me that I was broken, I identified it, so now I can become a better person. Yeah, I got to tell you, too, because um, for those of you out there, uh, Kat's going to be showing you throughout here on Facebook Live this book, right, and some of the images we have. Because one of the things that I know, and this is why I wanted to have you back here, Master Chief, one of the things that is so important now is we have so many of our youth right now, young people, that feel broken but are afraid to say it. You know, if you grow up in a project community like I grew up in or a community where you show any sign of weakness, you're doomed. Any sign. Any sign. But the idea to admit our vulnerability is a point of strength. How are you helping others through your story understand that vulnerability and that level that you have from that is a powerful, powerful place of strength? So the first way, the first thing I say to people is that admitting to your vulnerability, admitting to your, your past, admitting to your downfalls, the first thing you're telling yourself is that, hey, I have courage. Mm-hmm. A lot of people go through life not knowing that they have courage. A lot of people go through life not figuring out who they once were and who they could become. So when you admit that, hey, you know what, I was broken, you know, I was raped, molested, whatever, I have PTSD, whatever the, whatever the case may be, Dr. Pat. If you can openly and honestly and say, it doesn't have to be with your family members or close friends. It could be somebody that you know are going to judge you. But if you can tell them in their face, look at them, look them in their eye and say, you know what? This is who I was. That tells you right there that you have the courage to do anything in life. If you can open up up yourself to be transparent to millions of people in the world, which is what I'm doing, right? If I can open up myself to that, that tells me, you know, I can open up myself and say, tell people, you know, I have courage. I can now start to rebuild myself because I don't care if you judge me. I don't care if you continue to kick me down or push me to the side. I don't care if you continue to ignore me. But you know what? I have courage to admit that I was a broken person. Yeah. I admit that. I'll tell you what. We're, what we're talking about here is not only key, right? But look, at you and I talked about this the other day on the show, and I want to get deeper down into it because, look, the book – I read the book and I always find some new things in your book every time I open it up and read it. And uh, one of the things I picked up is that, look, adults called you Diablo, right? Funny story. Diablo. They used to call me the alchemist. And I'm not going to go into why they called me that, but pretty much it comes from the same place. But right. these, these names, right, and our youth and childhood, I never fit in, but I wanted to fit in. I never fit in. I wanted to fit in, right? I wanted to be able to be okay, right? Right. Isn't that, you know, when we come from history of abuse, and you and I come from that place, we come from that place. We strive every day of our life to try to fit in, to be accepted. How hard was that lesson for you? It was hard for me. It was, a, it was first of all, Dr. Pat, it was extremely hard for me to try to fit in, to want to fit in because I never thought that I could. The mistake me. I made was trying to fit in with other people instead of trying to fit in with who I was, who I could become. So I had a hard time struggling because we, I was one of those people that want to make everybody happy, that wanted people to like me. But what I found out was that I was always going outside of who I am. So that's why I tell people, I have, this, I have this saying that goes, you know, we always talk about think outside the box, think outside the box. But what we don't tell people is that think inside the box first, because if you think inside the box, that's you. That's your heart. That's your spirit. You know, that's your aura. And once you think inside the box, you identify that person, all those other people don't matter. When they, when they're going to judge you anyway, those people don't matter when they, 
when they look down on you, when they say you're stupid or slow or dumb, it doesn't matter. Once you fix what's inside you and you accept and you connect with that person that, that you are, the person that God made you, then those other people, they won't bother you with it when they say things that they say, the negative things. So it, it was real hard for me to identify with that. It was real hard for me to, to ch change that. And I tell people, I've read the books on Dr. Leaf called, you know, ch turn off my brain, turn on your brain. And it made me think that, you know what? I need to go inside myself. I need to turn my brain off, slow my brain down and figure out who I am. Because if you don't know who you are, you know what you, you wind up doing, Dr. Dr. Pat? You start following other people. And when I talk about thinking inside the box, where these corporations and companies say, hey, let's get together and let's come up with a group. Let's do these discussion groups. Let's think outside the box of everybody. But then what happens to those people is they'll go to, into one specific group or whatever group they choose, the, the, the gay people, the, 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 the LGBTQ people, whatever, whatever group you choose, you taking yourself and putting yourself inside their life, their lifestyle, their thoughts. But then if you think inside the box, you can still go with those other groups, but you're taking what you think and what you feel into that that group or that corporation. So now you share your life experience instead of sitting in a group and just, you know, going what everybody else says. You got now you have your own agenda and you can use that to help other people. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, but, but you know, here's the here's the thing too about what I'm really uh, uh, absolutely floored by. You and I probably the people that know us and like I had like a high school reunion here recently right, right. and so so they found me they and the woman me. they found me on the internet so the woman says are are, are you Pat Basili from Plainfield High School I said it. they said I said yeah the woman says to me you got to be kidding we thought you'd either be in jail or dead and I'm, like, and I'm thinking, I said, well, you know, close call, but I didn't make it because we learned some skills. I want to ask you this question. You are an accomplished former naval leader. That's why I call you Master Chief. That is a major accomplishment. Yes. That's an honor, sir. Thank you. How has your history, childhood, that help you excel there well and, and what happened was dr pat and i tell people this i i, I say it often is that I, I had an innate ability to separate myself from my own body and see that broken little boy and i never visualized him ever until i said you know what i have to deal with these issues i have to deal with my demons so it helped me first of all by realizing that that little boy was still around. That little boy is that little boy is still here, and I never wanted to go back to that little boy. That's why I tell people for your listeners: if you're trying to figure out a way in life, how to get ahead, how to move forward, how to be successful, you can never forget that little kid that you once were. That little boy, little girl. You have to always keep them with you. So I would I had an innate ability to see that little boy on the floor crying, hunched over, being molested, being abused. I had the ability to see him and then while i was looking at that little boy i was reliving that little boy not only was i reliving that little boy but i would get those though i would start to sweat my heart rate would go up my forehead would sweat you know i would get nervous but it was a constant reminder that hey that little boy is still in you so you have to dig down deep and keep pushing forward so what i did once i got into the military it, it it gave me a sense of urgency because i felt like i could always go back to that little boy in a negative way but I was going back into a positive way by seeing that little young man, knowing that he's still there. And I said, you know what? I want to be successful. I'm not going back to that little kid. So it helped me by keeping that little boy close to me. And it, even at 53 years old, that little kid is still right here with me, which keeps me focused on what I, what I, not only what I want to do, but what I don't want to do, or what do I don't want to, who I don't want to go back to. So that was a, a way for me driving myself forward and to not ever to go back and live that life again. Although I kept, it, I kept it close as a reminder. As easy, even as a reminder, at 53 years old, I know I can go back to being addicted to porn, being addicted to to, to older women. Like I was as a young kid, I can go back to that real easy. But it, what it did, it made me mentally stronger not to go back to that. So I remind people: keep that little that little young boy or little girl or that young adult. Keep that person close. Don't ever forget about them. Yeah. One of the things that I love about this is how absolutely gut-wrenching honest you are about your journey. I mean, 
when you talk about and you say something like, I was always angry, right? When I, when right. I hear that I was always angry and had become a dangerous kid, when I hear that, I think about myself and I think about where that anger went as a child, right. but then as an adult, right? And then I thought about like what I did to numb myself. Right. Here's, here's, here's why we're talking about this. Opioid crisis all over the world. Right. Canada has right. such a fentanyl issue, right? But why? Why? Well, here's why. Here's right? why, Doc. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Here's why. There are many things that you can be addicted to in life. You can be you can be addicted to, to success, success. You can be addicted to college, right? You can be addicted to alcohol and drugs. What we're doing is we're masking our pain with pleasure. The pain is still there, right? The pain yeah. is more permanent than the pleasure. The pleasure is temporary. Like if you're addicted to coffee, you drink that coffee, you, drink, you get your espresso shots, and it's only going to last for you for maybe maybe a, an hour. Let's say two hours, right? But then what happens when that shot of espresso goes away? Now you're back down to where you were. So there's, there's a temporary fixture. There's a temporary, temporary fixture in our mind that says, hey, this is what's going to help you get out of this pain or this agony, or this is going to motivate you, but it's temporary. So what you have to do to get something permanent, you have to be driven in life. You have to want something out of life. You have to be passionate about life, period. So these drugs, what people are doing, they're replacing the drugs with the pain. They don't know how to deal with the pain. And what, it goes back to what we were talking about, being being open, open and honest, but the key thing is being courageous. If you say, you know what, I want some, uh, I want some fentanyl or whatever. I want some crack cocaine. Because I dealt with that in my family, not me per se, but I dealt with that in my family. I did say, too. I want some crack. Yeah, I know, right. I want some crack. I want some fentanyl, whatever the case may be, but it's a temporary fix. And the thing is, you're, you're, that want and that need right now is very, very strong. It's very, very powerful. But you, what you have to do is tell yourself the fact that I want to be this better person. I don't want to get high anymore. I don't want to abuse anybody anymore. I don't want to be verbally abusive. That, ha that feeling, that feeling right there, because it's a feeling, that feeling has to be more powerful, more powerful than the want and need that you want in the opium, opiate, opiates and the, and the fentanyl. It has to be. But you have to see, you know what, if I stop doing opiates, if I stop doing fentanyl, this is who the person I can, this is the person I can become. But nobody ever gets that far. Some people do, some people don't. Some people die. We never really get to that, that point. You know why? Because we're more addicted to the, the, the pleasure of the drug than the pleasure of being somebody successful. And that's what I had to overcome. I had to switch my focus. I had to switch my energy. And we'll talk about that, too, how I did that. Yeah. And, and you know, look, hopefully we are understanding from each other's pain right. so that we can help, right? Uh, so we could talk to maybe a mom that has lost her son from something like that. Right. Right? right, because we have those losses, but it's hard for for either you or I to rationalize and express at a level, a deep level, of what it's like to be physically abused, sexually or otherwise, right? Unless you've gone through it, and you know the statistics on this right now about the degree by which. This is happening, and let's just stay in the United States for a moment. The right. degree by which this is happening in the United States is record-breaking, record-breaking. Um, you know, my mom is from, my stepmom's from the South, and so I pay attention to what's happening from in the South. Mm -hmm. And South Carolina, I, I especially watch South Carolina, and... South Carolina for 21 years, for 20, 21 times now, ha, is, is the deadliest state, one of the deadliest states we have for women. Because for, for 21 times, I believe, in a row, it has made the top 10 of states of women murdered by men, right? Wow. But even with that, if you can imagine the lack of attention something like that gets how are we ever going to expose the devastation of abuse from children that can't even report it where do we go with that and how has your story 
and what you've done and broken, how is it going to help us accelerate the action around that? So my story is going to accelerate the action around that is because, again, like you said, being vulnerable, right, being transparent and having the courage to come out here and say these things. And I'll tell you this, Dr. Pat, when there are, regardless of, regardless of who the president is, who your mayor is, who your congressman is, when you see those when you see those senior leaders just doing what they want to do, everybody else thinks that it's OK to do what they can, what they want to do. So it's a, it's that's a major part. How we come back, come back to this problem is first of all by being open, honest, and transparent, right? And also the way we do it is by telling these leaders to talk about it more and not talk about it any less than we what we've been talking about because we don't talk about it enough. It's not brought to the forefront like it should be. You have everything in this world. You have social media that'll get information out quick. You have Instagram, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, all these things. But what we do, we send out the wrong message, we send out the wrong things. You know why? Because bad news gets a lot of reviews. A lot of drama and messy things gets a lot of reviews. Do they want to save these kids' lives? That's a, that's a big question. Do we want to stop these drugs and these addictions? Do we want to stop all this stuff? Yeah, so maybe we do. But the ones that really want to want to stop it are the ones that have it in their direct family. If it's not in your direct family, it doesn't affect you. A lot of people don't care about it. You know, a lot of people don't want to talk about these things that takes time to heal these young men and women. It takes time to put them in a house. It takes time to educate them. They don't want to talk about that because the world is moving so fast. You know, I listen to Jay Shannon. He says, we're connected to people that are far away and, and we're, we're less connected to the, to the people that are close to us. We love the people that are like overseas because we can get talk to them instantly. They have these two, three minute ideas that they give us and makes us feel good. But we're less connected to the people that are close to us. Right. And so that's what we need to get back to. It's all about communication. It's all about wanting to do better in this world, wanting to get people to heal every single day. So my book, Broken, it talks about that. It's open and raw from, from chapter one. It's like, in your face, here I am, this is who I was, and this is who I become. So they, they'll find out who I became through like talking to you and people like that, and, and these radio shows and TV shows that I go on. Eventually, they will see who I had become. But I let them know, hey, I wasn't just this person. I didn't wake up and say, you know what, I'm going to retire as a command <laughs> master chief. I'm going to I'm going to be an author, you know, I'm going to be a teacher for two years. I didn't wake up to this person. It was a journey. And we'll talk about that. It was a journey that I had to go on. So my book broke in the first book, the first stage of my life from five years old to when I was 18 shows everything clear, concise, open and, and right there in front of you. So people can say, hey, well, you know what? If this guy can talk about his issues, his past, his demons, his addictions, then so can I. But it has to be more and it has to be more than just a book. It's got to be on the talk shows because we talk about a lot of stuff, a lot of things that don't mean anything. And that's what people like. Yeah. And and that's why today I want to have you back, because we're going to get dig down deep into this. You know, one of the things uh, Master Chief and I have in common is uh, the nightmare we call Christmas. And we're going to talk about that when we come back. But for, for those of you that just sent me an instant message on this, uh, uh, I, no, I did not make this up on South Carolina. Go ahead and Google deadliest state for women. Just Google that. South Carolina tops the list of deadliest states for women. No, I didn't make this up. 21 years in a row. And you keep electing the Senator Graham to the Senate. What are you thinking? Deadliest states for women, 21 years in a row. 21, that's like, what? Let's take a short that's break. A Seriously? Yeah. When we come back, what is it about Christmas that both Master Chief and I had to fully understand what was happening with us? You know, in psychology, they call stuff trigger. I don't call it a trigger. When something is so deeply inside of you, it doesn't become a trigger. It becomes a way of being. When we come back, um, Master Chief Leon Walker is going to, Jr. is going to take us on a journey of what a day in a life looks like, feels like, and is like for someone that is broken. We'll be right back.
everybody. Welcome. Welcome back to Power Up Radio with me, Dr. Pat. If you want to find out more about me, you can go to, uh, yeah, just go to the drpatshow.com, powerupradio.com. It should all get you there. Pretty soon, you're going to see our new website for Power Up Radio. Uh, And then we want to make sure you know how to get a copy of this book, Broken, uh, as well as how to contact Master Chief Walker directly. So let's go ahead and give them some information if we could. Okay, Dr. Uh, Dr. Pat, you can get the book on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and anywhere else that they distribute books. It's quicker to get it on Barnes and uh, Am- uh, Amazon. I'm sorry. You can contact me. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Leon R. Walker. Um, also, my website is iinspire1.com, the O-N-E, iinspireone.com, iinspireone.com, which is up and available. Um, we're taking, you know, people want to um, bring me in for speaking engagements. I'm available for that. Uh, 24-7 around the world. So, yeah, let um, Instagram and Facebook, Leon R. Walker, get the book on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Thank you. Look, um, jokingly, I I said to you the other day, you and I have something uh, in common, Christmas. And for a really long time, I loved Christmas, and then I didn't. And, um, you know... If you're going to have a traumatic experience, boy, you don't want to have it about something so popular, right? Right, or something that's supposed to be so happy and fun, right. So how was this for you? And let's take people on a journey because we just don't pop out and get born to a life uh, that turns out to be disastrous. As human beings, we are born beautifully as children joyfully as children but then it just all goes to hell well it goes to hell um based on my parents were great people let me tell you that first my parents were very loving very supportive people but uh things can go to hell um my 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 life went to hell quite a few times but let's talk about why i hated christmas i hated christmas because it was twofold it was like very emotional for me first i'm on an emotional high Right. And then I knew the day we would go to my, my, my grandmother's house for Christmas, uh, I knew something was going to happen because my mother, and my grandmother had by far the most toxic relationship that two women can have. And then that had that trickled down to my, my sister, my grandmother and my mother, my sister, although they, they, they loved each other. It just that toxic, that toxic uh, mindset was there. So we go to Christmas at my grandmother's house on the west side of Cleveland. And uh, there's a bunch of people there that are drinking and smoking and the music's playing. It's a great atmosphere. You know what the way it's supposed to be, and I had no idea that my grandmother and mother were at odds forever. So I'm sitting on the couch, my mother sitting across from me next to my father. They drinking and stuff, and and I kind of shift my eyes to the kitchen, like you know, mommy, I'm I'm over there, like holding my hands, like you know, I smell the food. You know, you can the, the, the aromas floating around the house, and you know she's baking something, and we got greens in there, macaroni cheese. You know, the the, the holiday festivities. So I I dress my mother to the to the kitchen, and she gets up and. Then my mother was very close. Love my mother to death, even and even in death. We get to the kitchen and uh, I'm like, Ma, I want some, I want some greens. You know, I'm looking at butter all sheepishly. I want some greens. She's like, well, they're not ready. Let me see. You know, let's see. So I knew that I just kind of felt some type of evil force coming over. I don't know what it was, but I would soon find out. My mother took the lid off the greens. You can see the steam boiling up. And so she she looks for a spoon. She gets a spoon and and dig the spoon in the greens and tap it. And then as she puts the greens in my mouth, I hear a, a loud bang. And I didn't know what it was, so it shook me. And I looked up, and my grandmother was there with her hand on her hip, and she had smacked my mother so hard, her face had turned, instantly turned burgundy. But I was holding my mother's hand at the same time, so I could feel the pain. I could feel the, that thunderous slap or punch, I can't remember what it was, down through my mother's arm, through her body, into my hand. And, I, and, and when that happened, I peed on myself. I was always peeing on myself because of fear and things like that and being sexually assaulted. That's a part of it. But I started peeing on myself and I saw my grandmother put her finger in my mother's face, which is very disrespectful. And she said, don't you ever come in my kitchen when I'm here. Don't you ever go into my food. This is my kitchen, not your kitchen. What I learned there was a lot of things. I learned, first of all, that my my mother and grandmother had a toxic relationship, very violent, very volatile. But I also learned that I didn't like to see women being hit by another yeah. woman or another man. And I witnessed that too. So that set the stage for me. I didn't want to go back over there. I didn't want to go to Christmas anymore. I didn't want any more toys. I didn't want to be a part of a holiday. I didn't. 
that stays with you for a lifetime. It you never know, went away. It never goes away. But this is really the impact. And so when we start to look at something like that, it starts to shape us. And it starts to shape us in, in ways where we don't quite understand the impact of the actions that we're going to take. Because, you know, you then go off in your life and there's a series of things one after the other that ultimately, you know, provide information for the book, but also become information about what it's like to go through a journey and discover, not very, not at first, because I didn't discover it at first, but pieces of you and your soul get chipped away from these. Was that what it was like for you? Because people look at us and they think, oh, you must have had this event or that event. No, we had about 50 events, right? Right, 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 or more. So what it did to me, Dr. Pat, it did a couple of things to me. For the better, it it taught me not to hit women, right? Yeah. But also, it the noise, the sound of my mother being slapped and punched by my grandmother, that sound, it, not only did it resonate me, not only did it scare me, but like you said, it stuck with me for the rest of my life. Even to this day, if I was angry and hit somebody, the sound of hitting somebody is very creepy to me. And I heard that sound quite a few times as a kid when my parents were fighting and when my, my uncle knocked my mother's teeth out. But I heard that sound over and over and over again. And it made me look at my grandmother as like a this evil person. Although she was very lovely, she was a very hardworking woman. She was a janitor for her entire life. But that sound, it scared the daylights out of me. And that feeling of my mother being hit, not only did my mother feel it, but I felt it through my mother's hand. And so when you feel somebody's hand shaking after they get hit by their own mother, it's very devastating. You know, and I, I looked at that, I'm like, if my grandmother can hit my mother, who else can she hit? Who, will I be hit next? You know, I didn't feel the love in, in my family for a long time. I felt a lot of anger, a lot of discontent, a lot of fear. Although I knew my parents were loving parents, and so were my grandparents, they were. But the violence in my household was around for my entire childhood. And so that's what I, I learned. Also, like I said, I learned not to hit women because of the pain it's going to do. But what it did to me in a negative sense, I said, you know, if I can't hit women, I'm scared, I'm afraid to hear that sound. I'm, a, I'm afraid to verbally or, or physically hurt women. But then I start, I had become verbally abusive because of what I saw my mother, my grandmother go through. So not only did that, the, the, the sound of my mother being hit, but the words that they shared, it stuck with me. Yeah. When we think about this, though, it also makes you completely exposed to other forms of abuse because, you know, what happens and what we're talking about, Master Chief, what happens is we experience something like this and we start to really walk on eggshells. We walk in fear. So we learn how not to stand up for ourselves. And that right. is really what happens. You know, when you hear about children like yourself that are physically, sexually emotionally abused, there's usually an incident which opens them up, right, to be afraid. How did that, in, how did that really affect you so that you had a really difficult time moving forward as a child, really protecting yourself and saying no? So, it, it, so here's the thing, Dr. Pat, we lose four to seven kids per day due to abuse. They yep. die. Yep. Four to seven kids by uh, reading the reports on child abuse center throughout the United States, we lose four to seven kids a day during, due, due to abuse. So the way it, it shaped me moving forward, it took my confidence clearly out of me. It took my self-esteem clearly out of me because I felt like there was nobody there aside from my father. I felt like there was nobody there to protect my mother. And there was probably nobody there to protect my grandmother because let me tell you something, my grandmother was abused too. Yeah. I watched my grandmother verbally abused. So that verbal abuse for me, from my grandma, my grandfather, my uncle, seeing my didn't talk to my grandma like she wasn't nothing. And that's in my book too. That shaped my, my, my the way I could talk to women. I thought it was okay to talk to women like that because they would talk to my grandmother and would, they would laugh about it. So my grandmother, in, 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 in a sense, she took it out on my mother. But it, it took my confidence away. It, it took my self-esteem away. It felt like I was, I was in this world by myself. You know, not only was I wet in the bed because of uh, being sexually abused, but I was wet in the bed because I was afraid. My father was a great man. He was a great provider. 
But when he would come home, I would pee on myself, seeing his car pull up in the driveway and just visualizing what could happen. It was just a bunch of fear. So I grew up, I grew up this child that was broken. That's why I call it broken. I, was, I grew up this child that was very dysfunctional. I grew up this child that didn't have any confidence, didn't have any self-esteem. So once I started, like I mentioned earlier, once I started looking at that kid and visualizing that broken kid, I said, I'll never go back to being that kid ever, ever, ever again. And that's why I'm so driven. That's why I'm so passionate, not only about my life, but other people's life. And these kids are being abused. I'm here for these children and these young men and women. And I'm here for these adults, too, that are being abused, too, because adults are being abused, too. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, you know, right now uh, we have the silent killer that's operating and nobody wants to talk about this. Nobody wants to talk about the fact that we we have people that have come to this country that may not have papers, but the women and children that are part of that cycle, they absolutely have no voice. And, you know, they're in situations where they're abused, they're beaten, they're sexually uh, every day because they know that if they open their mouths, they are going to be in trouble. And that is about the, the one of the worst forms of inhumanity that we can talk about, that we would take any man, woman, child in a situation, know what their vulnerability and their weakness is and prey oh. upon it. Pray upon it. Pray upon but it. You know what, Dr. Pat, we have not only that, there's so many forms of prey and, and abuse in this world. You are, and you talked about, you mentioned a silent killer, and I like that. There's another silent killer, and I, I mention this all the time. Broken men break women. I was one of those silent killers. I was a broken man, so I would break women, and rather directly or indirectly, rather whether I was doing it being being uh, vindictive and I want revenge. But there's another, there, there are a lot of silent killers out in this world that we don't pay attention to, and one of them are it's, it's being a narcissistic person or a narcissistic man. Somebody that's selfish, somebody that just wants you to look at them for them, but that breaks women down, that breaks families down because this person or this man just wants you to take care of him, regardless of your yeah. kids or regardless of their kids. But the, the silent killer is not just, you know, exposing these young people, that, that the immigrants, whatever the case may be, but the, the silent killer is somebody that's passive aggressive, it's somebody that's narcissistic as well. Not just men, but women too. So we have a lot of silent killers in this world. But you know, we have to get to the root cause of the problem, and it starts with talking about what happened to these people as children. Yeah, uh, let's talk about why this is important. Uh, okay, because look, many people say, "Oh man, you know what? That's like happening over there in that family." But here's the reality of it: the level by which this is going on now in our culture is so rampant, right? Social media, that we nobody is really exempt from this. There's a reason that we now have a term called bullying because right. we're talking about a degree by which this behavior overflows into the workplace. It overflows in social media. It overflows into your future and how you treat your children. You're here, uh, if I may, Aren't you here to break the cycle and help other people break the cycle? Dr. Pat, I'm, I'm here to break the cycle and, and, and I have I had a broken the cycle. But don't don't get me wrong, there was times where I was a part of the cycle. Yeah. And when you're part of the cycle, either you're gonna get off or you'll keep you're gonna keep riding. I decided to get off that cycle because I, I was hurting myself, I was hurting my children, I was hurting friends, relationships. Because of my cycle, because of me not breaking the cycle. I destroyed every relationship I was in. I destroyed my marriage because I did not break the cycle. And when I did break it, it was too late as far as the people that I had hurt on, along that path. It was, too, it was too late, you know, but um, I'm sorry. No, it that's all right. Late. But what happened was I decided to, I wanted to be a better person. I wanted to be a different person. Now, here's the thing, and I like to talk about this. Yeah. People, are, we have two journeys, okay? People don't realize this. Everybody says, I'm on my journey. I'm in my purpose. Great. Got it. But Dr. Pat, we have two journeys, okay? You have a journey. You have a path of destruction. You have a path of construction. And in that path of construction, there will be some disruption, okay? And so that's what people figure out. It's like, this is too much, di this is too much uh, disruption for me. This is too much disruption for me. God is not going to put you on a path of destruction. But during that path of dis disruption, you will have some destruction, okay? And eventually, if you're still in that path, you're going to get to the, your path of construction. So there's two paths. We always take the, 
well, the devil's got me on the path of destruction. Yeah, he does. He's going to do it every day. The devil is alive, like they say. But you have that one path of construction, which I'm not, I, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, preach or anything like that, but I do believe in God because I've seen him. We'll talk about that. But those two paths, the path of destruction and the path of construction, you have to realize that. It starts off with we're, we're, we're open and we're, we're honest and we're, we're, we're innocent little kids. That's our path of construction. And on that path, there's going to be some disruption and some destruction, okay? But the key thing is staying on that path because God is not going to put you on the path of destruction. It's a path of construction. But you have those two paths. All you got to do is stay on that path. A lot of people fail. They falter. They succumb to drugs. They succumb to addictions. And I was one of those people. But I knew if I stay on this path at the other end, I'm going to be okay. Like this is for me right now, the, the journey, the other end is who I am right now at 53 years old. Some people get to this point in their life at 20 years old. I was too immature and I was broken. I couldn't get to this path at 20 years old. There was no way. Not even 30 years old. Not even 35. But I had I given up, I would have never made it to 53. I have never would have never become a teacher. I would have never become an author. I would never be able to talk to you today had I just given up. Giving yeah. up is a sin. Yeah, I mean, look at uh, giving up is something that. I learned at a very young age not to do. Thanks, thanks to my stepmother. But here we are. I want to go back to something in this last segment, you know, this last time we have left. Uh, but before I do, again, I would love for you to tell people how they can find out about you and how they can get a copy of the book. And then I want to talk about what happens when we think God has turned its back on us. But how can we find out more about you? You can find out more about me on Instagram and Facebook, Leon R. Walker. My website, iinspire1one.com. I'm on, you can Google me too. There are a lot of my native careers on Google uh, as well. But um, yeah, Instagram, Facebook. I don't have a Twitter account yet. My um, my uh, website, iinspire1.com. And I'm just let you know, Doc, Dr. Pat, I'm doing a camp next year for kids. Nice. I'm looking at ages 13 to 18, around June time frame. So we're going to try to go from state to state, but I'm doing that for the, for the rest of my life. Now, when people say that God has turned their back on them, that's not the case. God has never turned his back on anybody. I read a quote the other day. It says a lot of people have a, have a cross on their chest, but how many people have a cross on their back? Okay. So for people that, here's the thing, for people that think that God has turned their back on them, and trust me, I was one of those people. But you know why I thought that he turned his back on me, Dr. Pat? Is because I wanted to keep doing evil things. I wanted to. I wanted to maintain in that vein of addictions. I wanted to keep. I wanted to become. I wanted to continue to become verbally abusive. I wanted to continue to drink and smoke. I wanted to continue to, to cheat and lie. So God didn't turn His back on me. I turned my back on God. So that's the thing that people say. Well, I'm going to repent. Repent means to, now. Repent means to turn your back and not go through that and do it again. But some people use that as an excuse to say, okay, I drank last night, but I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to Sunday school on Wednesday. I'm going to go to church on Sunday and repent to cleanse my soul. No, you have to repent. You have to turn your back totally on that addiction if you're ready to do it. But people don't do it because they're not ready to do it. And people say God turns it back on me because they don't they don't want to stop, Dr. Pat. They don't want to stop being an alcoholic or addicted to fentanyl or addicted to crack. They use that as an excuse. And when you keep using it as an excuse, then you got to be careful because you're going to continue to hurt your health. You're going to hurt relationships. And in some cases, people die doing that, period. They do die. I mean, uh, I lost my mom to suicide. Um, I have two sisters that lived a life of alcoholism and drugs. Uh, at every level, at every level possible, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I had another sister that uh, died on a hospital floor. So we have to be able to look at our lives and and really, really for all of us to be called to share this information for one reason and one reason only, not because we like to hear ourselves talk, but if you hear right. something that we're saying today, that will save your life or a life of others, then the message that we're passing on perhaps is a message that is worth something to you and to humanity. But in the end, the, the ball is in our par park. Is The ball is in our court. You know, I want to thank you for today. I want to ask you this question here. 
and congrats. Uh, first of all, thank you for bringing this message out and thank you for being able to do something with the camp for the kids. That's really awesome. Totally yeah, well, awesome. Um, we'll I'll invite you out there. Be free. Uh, Come on I, I'm on it. I'm on it. Okay. Um, right. Look, Broken is the title of your book, right. but it doesn't have to be for us. It doesn't have to be a life sentence for the way we live our life. In right. the final minute or so left, I would like to ask you, what is your personal message? What would you say to the folks listening to really help them rise up, regardless of what they're going through today? And thank you okay, again. Mike, thank you for having me, Doc. I talked about the two journeys, the path of destruction and the path of construction. And I always live by this quote that Les Brown says, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. It's just the beginning. And if you start, you're going to be great. My thing is, don't rely on other people to get you through life. First of all, believe in God, first of all. And you need that one person, aside from your parents, but hold yourself accountable. I call it my own, I do my own brain surgery. Surgery. I do my mind own, own mind surgery. And I figure out, who am I? Who, who, who am I? What do I want out of life? Where am I going with this? How do I get there? In life, there's recipes and there's directions. If you want to make a great cake, you, you flip the back of the cake box and it's got directions. It's got the recipe. Well, life has directions and recipe and that lies within God. That lies within friends. That lies within positive people. You surround yourself with like-minded people. You're going to get there. Those are your directions and those are your recipes in life that you need to get further. That's all it is. But the thing, key thing is relying on yourself, wanting something out of life, and be driven and be passionate and, and be, be purposeful in everything that you say and everything that you do. Expect to give back. Be a servant. And I tell you one more thing, Doc, I say things fall into place when they have a place to fall into. That's my quote. If you're nice, if you're honest, if you're open, if you're upfront, if you're transparent, if you're vulnerable, the blessings will fall into your soul. The blessings will fall into your, your life. The blessings will fall into your heart. But if you lie, cheating, stealing, and, and beating on people and beating women and, and deceiving people, your soul and your spirit is not open to that. So things are not going to fall into place. They're going to come down to here, but they'll say, oh, this person is evil. They're still doing wrong. wrong and you're not going to get the blessings. I had to go through that. That was my trials and tribulations of life. And that's how I found out. Yeah, I totally get it. I did too. And I got to tell you, I don't want to do it again. Master Chief, thank you so much for today. Thank you for having me, Dr. Pat. I appreciate it. Hey, everybody, the book is called Broken. I love the book. Uh, and, and again, there are lessons in the book. And that's why I love it, because there's a recognition and there's a point of courage that I will say to everybody today, in order for you to be this transparent, there is a life's journey that is so committed to helping and inspiring others to do the same. Thank you, Master Chief. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Dr. Pat. Thank you for having me. I want to thank Kat for pushing all the right buttons. I want to thank all of you for tuning us in and turning us on. And yes, to uh, thank you for Brantley. Yes, I am going to do a show. Thanks thank to you, you and your text on the deadliest Great. states for women. Uh, Teresa, That's a tough uh, one. All right, everybody. See you next hey, time. <laughs> thank you all for coming in. I appreciate it. Uh, Showing me, th thank you for showing me the love and the support. I know it was at um, two o'clock and you all had work to do and things like that, but um, thank you again for coming in. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Pat. You betcha. Kat, thank you. Right. You've been listening to Power Up Radio with Dr. Pat, unleashed, unshaken, unstoppable. Tune in each week on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Dr. Pat brings mind-blowing news, conversations with top world thought leaders, and Dr. Pat herself, unleashed like never heard before. It's not about mistakes and all about the guts to not just step out of your comfort zone, but annihilate it. Think authentic and spontaneous. Think fun and forefront. Think no matter what, don't just make a difference, be the difference. Visit www.PowerUpDrPat.com or powerup talkradio.com. <laughs> <laughs>